take as much time when you have time, when you're in your teens, when you're young to explore and figure out what it is that you really enjoy doing. Hi, everyone. Thanks for listening to another episode of The Creative Truth. This week, I have the wonderful Kate Lance on from the Creative Coast. And uh, to start out, I would like you to just tell us who you are and what you do. Well, I'm Kate, uh, and I am the Director of Programming and Communications at the Creative Coast. And basically, what that means is I run the social media channels. Um, I um, run the programmatic events. So like we have a big conference that we put on each year called, um, it used to be Geek In, now it's Grit, where we bring technologists and creatives and innovators together um, for like, usually it's about a two-day conference. And then um, we offer other um, more educational programming, such as Lunchtime Topics, which you edit on a weekly basis, but where we bring in business experts and they share their knowledge with the community in a presentation. Um, so we had like someone speak about resilience last week. We've had people speak about leadership. We have someone who's going to speak about cryptocurrency and the future of where that's headed in terms of business. So it's a wide variety of topics. Um, and then we have, you know, like She Hustles, which is uh, an event for um, Savannah's Women Entrepreneurs and Leaders. That's another kind of conference. Even uh, It's an, an event in the evening that we put on a couple times a year. So um, yeah, we do different stuff. And we also have a podcast, Entrepreneur's Night. That's another one that's coming up next week. Um, so basically, our mission is to catalyze the innovation economy. And we do that through um, promoting area startups and endeavors um, that focus on innovation, um, doing something that really hasn't been done. Um, and then we do that basically like telling their stories. Um, and then we do that through the events and the programming. And um, also we have something called the Bridge Fund, which Jen can tell you all about, but she worked to get that. And that's to bring in, um, start like a, a seed fund for uh, uh, startups in the area and to attract businesses to Savannah so we can create high wage jobs here. Um, so you, you kind of talked about the, the, the mission of the Creative Coast. Can you talk about like the nature of it and how it fits into Savannah and Sita? Yeah, so um, we're funded, our two major funders are the Savannah Economic Development Authority or Sita and the city of Savannah. And um, basically our, our long-term vision is to uh, be like a, a creative uh, technological hub for innovators in areas of like, you know, logistics. Um, we have a lot of design uh, uh, talent here. Um, and to really, what we found is that those types of businesses, the um, uh, tech businesses particularly, have high wage jobs, like they pay higher than normal. So we're, we come along and basically as a part of CETA and the city of Savannah, that, that that area of what they're trying to do in Savannah, we come along and we make sure that's happening by um, like doing those three things I said, we're educating and growing the, the startups in the area, we're attracting startups to the area um, and, and businesses. Um, Jen Bonet, who's the executive director of the Creative, of the Creative Co, she also is the um, uh, vice president of entrepreneurship and innovation at CETA. And one of her big jobs is to attract companies here um, have them relocate and then create a bunch of high wage jobs. So, um, does that answer your question? Yeah. Um, and, uh, do you also mention, do you also mind talking about choose Savannah? Cause I know that's one of the incentives that's pretty exciting. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, choose Savannah is a campaign that we came, um, we actually, create marketing. We work with you guys to, um, to make those videos for the campaign. But basically we launched a campaign, I guess it was back in, was it the fall of last year? Um, to try to highlight Savannah as why, why it's a great place to live and work as a part of this uh, uh, creative technologies incentive that the Savannah Economic Development Authority um, offers. So um, basically, um, Sorry, the, my phone is going off. The Savannah I heard it, yeah. Development Authority. One of the biggest things that they've launched in the in the last, um, I think it's like year and a half, is um, they will reimburse um, remote tech workers who re relocate to Savannah up to two k, um, and 
to help them, you know, get settled in. And they have to, I think there's certain requirements, like you have to be, you have to permanently relocate here, of course, but you have to be here for so many months before you receive the reimbursement. But, um, and then they also offer, I think it's like um, a grant of $20,000. If you create X number of jobs, I, I want to say it's five, but don't quote me on that. Um, if your business creates X number of jobs and it has to be a high, higher wage job. So above the average the, the, I think national average. Um, and then there's like facility rental assistance that, that um, they off, also offer. So, um, and that's all of that. That's on our site at uh, the creative coast.org forward slash choose Savannah. <laughs> so. Cool. Which I'll link below too. If okay, you're, cool. and if you're listening, it'll be in the description of this episode. Um, so let's talk about you for a minute. Tell me about your, like where you're from, what you, went to school for and your, what your background is? So, yeah, I am from Savannah. <laughs> um, I go way back in Savannah. My family is from Savannah and um, I went to school. So I have an interesting story. <laughs> um, I went to school originally at the University of Georgia to be a, um, I didn't know what I wanted to do. Like so many kids at that time in their life, like you just go off to college and you're thrown into like, okay, I've got to pick a major. I've got to, I had no clue, but I knew that, um, my parents told me, you know, like anything in the medical field is, is a sure path to, you know, being financially secure. And if you can find something that's niche, even better. And so I, I picked a degree in audiology, um, an undergrad in audiology, which, um, if you aren't familiar with that, it's basically a hearing doctor. So it's someone who performs, uh, they give you the hearing tests and then they fit you with hearing aids. Um, and I was like, well, yeah, I know, like, by the way, I listen to music, I'm going to be deaf. And <laughs> so I can't be the only one, you know, like we were all had a disc mans, you know? And, um, so anyways, I was so sure I was, I wasn't sure I picked it. And I say this only to say, only to make the point of, I just picked a major because I felt like I had to, and I, it, it wasn't necessarily in a creative field, although I, I do believe that every job requires some level of creativity. And I graduated and I was like, I don't know if I want to do this. <laughs> like a lot of people who graduate, they're like, I don't know what I, why I got this major. Um, and I, I worked in the, the audiology, I guess you could say industry. I worked for audiologists for about a year as a technician because I wanted to be certain that I didn't want to do this. Um, you have to go get your AUD, which is a four-year degree. And there was no programs in the state of Georgia. And I was like, okay, well, I don't really want to leave Savannah. I love Savannah. Um, and I don't know that I want to do this. So let me try it out. Try it out. And I was like, it was great great, noble profession. And I learned from really smart people. But I was like, I just don't feel like, you know, have you ever done something long enough and you realize like, I am not fit for this. Like, I just feel not, I wouldn't say depressed, but like you come home and you feel less, you don't feel energized by it. You I'm feel, excited about it. Yeah. And so um, it's a good way to find out what you want to do too, is by finding out what you don't want to do for sure. Yeah, exactly. And I wish I'd done that more at a younger age, but that's a whole nother story. But, um, I basically was like, okay, I don't want to do this. I went back to school at um, Armstrong, which is now Georgia Southern, the Armstrong campus. And I was like, I'm just going to get a general degree. I'm going to do what everybody told me not to do and do what I'm interested in and try it out. And I only needed to go for like a year at most. I was like, okay, that's not bad. And I'm younger now. And so I have some money to do it because I've worked. So I did it. And that's what landed me in an internship at the Creative Coast. If I hadn't gone back to school and tried it, I would have never landed in an internship at the Creative Coast because you had to be a student intern and in at a university. So, um, and that's when when I I was I was just a general communications intern. I would kind of do whatever they needed me to do. I did things with finances, and um, I really like fell in love with entrepreneurship and the idea of entrepreneurship. And I was like, this is, I want to like be an entrepreneur. <laughs> so I want to own my own business. And um, I like the idea of not being on this like set path where, you know, you're doing the same thing every day or, um, you know, I guess there's only, there's like a cap to what you can do, if that makes sense. Mm. Um, I guess I shouldn't say that because you could do a lot of things with the different careers, but you get the general idea like it just was kind of off the beaten path. And so I really just fell in love with it. And I fell in love with the leadership at the Creative Coast. 
and learned a lot. And I kind of never really left. I mean, I've done other things when I was not full time at the Creative Coast, but um, it just led me to want to learn even more about entrepreneurship. Every year I learned something different. And then, you know, I have side hustles that I work on here and there. But anywho, that's kind of my story. I hope that that's helpful. <laughs> Um, and I learned just recently from talking to you that you attended the, so the creative coast also puts on a program called the idea accelerator bootcamp, which is yeah. an annual, annual 12. It's always, is it always 12 weeks? Uh, it's been like 14 weeks. Sometimes it goes longer. We're pretty flexible with it. It's been 10 weeks, I think. So yeah, but and, 12 weeks. Is this and do you mind talking about what, uh, what you attended with last year? Yeah, I can talk about that. So, um, I, a friend came to me, she's a pharmacist in Savannah. And she was like, you know, I really, we should think about like, but planning bachelorette parties. We've done enough of these that I bet like we could do this professionally. She had this idea that she wanted to do this for a living. She's really good at it. And she's always the friend that like, she'll make like the koozies. She has all of the creative stuff for it. Like she's got a whole craft room and, or she'll make like the koozies or she'll make the sashes. And, um, she's been to a lot of bachelorette parties and I have too. And I said, you know, that'd be a really good idea. But I think like, what if we stepped it up and said, like, not only do we like plan the bachelorette party for you and we offer these different packages, but what if we, what if we like were an all in one booking service? Like you did it all online and we made it as easy as possible. And not only that, like we let each per person of the bachelorette customize what they want to do. So meaning like if you've, it's probably different for guys, but I've been on a lot of bachelorette parties and it always ends up people aren't, they don't get in fights necessarily, but that has happened on bachelorettes. But I feel like not everyone's on the same page about what they want to do, especially at my age in life at 31, because you've got some, some people who are parents mm -hmm. and you know, like I had a friend who she had just had a baby and she had to go on a bachelorette party. She's like, well, I don't really want to go get drunk. I'm, I'm breastfeeding. And like, it's just not where I'm at in life. Like, I don't want to go out and party. And also it was an away trip. She's like, I don't want to spend a lot of money. And, you know, I don't know if you've been on a bachelorette that's like an away or travel or not a bachelorette, a bachelor party. <laughs> you probably hasn't. I, haven't been I on went a to New Orleans last year. You did. Okay. Right before yeah. COVID hit. Yeah. Yeah. But you can drop a lot of money on mm -hmm. those. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've been in a couple where I was like, this is not like what I want to do with a thousand dollars. I do not want to like, like I never get to travel myself. So like, if you could allow each person in the group to say like, okay, like, I don't want the spa package. You guys go to the spa and we'll meet up with you at, you know, the bar later or something, or, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to, if I am going to do the spa package, I'm only going to get my nails done. I'm not going to do the whole thing. And I'm not going to like, you know, usually there's one person that takes all the money and distributes in the group, but we would be the ones to handle the money because that's kind of can get him that I actually did. Wasn't a bachelorette party where there was a fight over that. And I was like, mm. this should not be a fight. Like, you know um, so we were, our, our goal was to make it as seamless as, as possible, kind of like split wise, but like specifically for bachelorettes and cause they're, it's, a great, it's a great idea. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So and I would have partnerships with the businesses yeah. and yeah. Yes. Yeah. And that was another thing. There's a couple people doing similar esque things in Savannah. I don't think they're doing anything techy like that. Um, and obviously we weren't going to st start out because if you've been to the ideal accelerator, you know, and you have been, you know, that like you don't institute your big idea. You have to like start as broad as you can and, and figure out like what your customer actually wants before you're like, we need an app, you know, you need to determine if they even want an app and that's something that they need. And so that's kind of, that's why I attended because I wanted to see if, you know, do the research and determine if people actually wanted an app, you know, so. Yep. That's exactly where I'm at with it. Yeah. Um, do you think creativity, you mentioned that everyone in every role, you have to be creative in some way. Do you think creative creativity is inherent to people or do you think it's something that people choose to develop? I think you definitely have to choose it. I mean, I think that, you know, I think you could be a doctor or a nurse or um, a lawyer and those can, they can require a lot of creativity. I mean, anytime you're working with people, I feel like those, those individuals are the most creative because you have to think on your feet and you have to deal with different personalities and, um, but I think there are people who are better at it than others, right? Like you have to make the decision, like, 
I'm going to be open to, to thinking not only in terms of like creativity, but thinking innovatively and thinking in a way that is progressive. Um, so yeah, in short, yeah. <laughs> so even people you wouldn't necessarily think of as traditionally creative people, you, they're basically having to think cre- creatively and innovatively because they're, I like that. I, I like that concept of when you're dealing with people, you have to be creative because people are just different. Yeah. Um, no one person is the same, especially like when you're in customer facing roles, like, like, you know, like as a waitress or a waiter, like you deal with some like really horrible people sometimes, <laughs> you know, and like you have to be able to sometimes think on your feet and like, it might not be to the capacity of what like we do on a daily basis in terms of creativity, but it definitely like you, you come up with creative solutions to problems. So, yeah. So you're, um, coming up with programming ideas, running the meetings, doing all the design work, promoting them on social media, then hosting them or attending them. And then you even do some of the editing. Um, Is there any one area of your role that you like particularly just find the most joy? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, yeah, I do. I, I, one of the reasons I like my job so much is because I I'm an introvert. And so I love the ability to like, just sit down and not have interruptions and just design or put the website together or um, come up with some really creative copy for social media. And like, I like, it's almost like recharging for me to be able to do that, like, and not have constant interruptions. I'm a true introvert. Um, but then you don't, you don't really come across this one to me. Oh man. Like I, I have to have alone time or I start to get really snappy. Like I just, it's, it's bad actually. Like I, I was telling somebody the other day, it's like, I need to be in order. And also in order for me to think creatively, if I constantly have people bombarding me with stuff or like constant interruption, um, I like, I gotta go lock myself in a room in the dark with no, nothing stimulating me so that I can like recharge and have some energy to think. So, um, but yeah, anywho, anywho, I, but I do like the social aspect. So I, I'm an introvert, but I like socializing with people. I like people. Um, I like learning about people. I have a curiosity about people. So, um, you know, it's, it, I think the idea of a podcast is great because you get to meet all these different people. To me, that's really something I'd be interested in too, but um, it's a timing thing. But um, all that to say is like, I think what I like most, it's hard to nail it, to pin it down. I like, I like being able to sit and think and design and I'm not a professional designer. I'm very amateur. I have taken design classes, but, and I'm using Canva. So some designers will be like, Oh, she's not using the Adobe suite. I have used it for, for what I do, I need to think quickly. And I, I mean, to move quickly, like I can find someone who's going to speak next week and I need to get it up like right away. And the listeners, need, yeah. T- tell, explain to listeners what Canva is. Cause some people might not oh, even know. I don't know about Canva. So that, and that story is really interesting too. I think the founders are like billionaires now or something, but basically um, it's a design tool. So you can like, if you've ever seen, you know, on Photoshop, somebody's had their background removed, like, and it's just their image, like just their, I guess silhouette where their body, like you can do that in Canva and then you can like, you can create Instagram posts, original content um, and with, you know, text and everything. So um, like what Adobe Photoshop or Adobe Illustrator would do, um, you can do in Canva basically, but much easier, like Template. it's very straightforward. Um, so yeah. And some people would argue that Photoshop and Illustrator are really easy. I'm like, I don't think so. There's a learning curve there for sure. With Canva, there's not. I'm I'm such an amateur designer as well, but it is good to have like some design sense and you still need some design sense to use Canva. But there's a book by Austin Kleon, I think, called Steal Like an Artist. Mm-hmm. And it basically asserts that anything you're doing creatively comes from something you've ingested, like consumed as media, whether it's photos you've seen or design you've seen or movies you've seen or videos you've seen somewhere in the back of your brain, what you're, there is no true creativity. So instead of trying to start with a blank canvas and illustrator and come up with something brand new from scratch, just embrace the fact that 
you're going to be taking it subconsciously from somebody else and consciously just take it from somebody else and adapt it and make it your own. And Canva like kind of streamlines that process because they give you a template. You kind of know what you're looking for. If you have that design sense or like a little bit of experience and then you just basically upload yeah, your, your images and your text and your, your brand uh, identity and stuff. And yeah, you've got social asset or you got social, you know, posts yeah. and stuff in, and it, uh, you know, and this podcast too is not only just about being an artist or being a creative entrepreneur or, or a creative professional, but it's also about making money in those things. So, and time is money. So I think Canva is an awesome tool, which I'll also link to that below. I do too. And to your point about, well, one, I should have brought up the templates. Cause I think that's why most people use Canva. I'm weird. And I'm like, I'm going to create something from scratch in Canva. Like I'm going to create oh, really? my own template. Yeah, most of everything I do, like I don't use the templates in there, but I think that hmm. the templates are really great. Like they're even faster. I, I just come up with my own idea and then I u- reuse that idea for a lot of stuff, basically. Um, Make your own template. Yeah, so, so yeah, essentially, yeah. Um, but to your point about like no, it's basically like no ideas are our own. Somebody, I think it was Jawan Platt who you had on your show. Yeah, he um, came, his episode came out on... Uh, March 23rd, because this episode's coming out on April 6th. Okay. April so 6th. Two weeks, two weeks ago. Gotcha. He, I think it was, I think he told me this because he's always reading and always learning. Um, and I think it was just that, that idea, like your ideas are never really your own. Like we like to think that I came up with that, but like you've heard it somewhere or you have taken an idea and you've made it your own by adding this or that to it. So that's kind of what I think about what I do in general to the point you made of like reuse it. And that's why Canva is beautiful because you are really using building upon other people's creativity. And that's all creativity is in my mind is building on like, and innovation too, like you're building on another idea that somebody else had. So. Mixing and remixing and, and making it more than the sum of the yeah. parts, I guess. Um, yeah. So uh, let's see, I have two questions, but I don't know, both are related to what we just talked about. I guess first I want to talk about, are there any other tools that you use day to day? And actually I, I know of like, for example, you love to use Eventbrite to schedule, uh, you know, to find out attendees of an event. Um, what are some other web tools that you use to streamline what you do? Um, well, there's a bunch, but um, well, obviously Zoom right now. But um, um, the ones that I've really, from a social media standpoint, that I've really enjoyed using, um, I like Headliner, which is basically like, taking audio and you use headliner, right? No, I use audiogram. Oh, audiogram. I think you've told me that. Yeah. Um, Headliners just like audiogram. I'm getting, I I have to be careful because I always get headliner and lumen five mixed up and lumen five. Mm. Have you ever used lumen five? Yes, I have used them. Yeah. I love lumen five because it's another one that makes, it makes video content. And especially if you are like a news oriented organization, that's how you do your top five videos. Oh, well, it's like, uh, that's how I was doing our newsletter videos. Yes, yeah. yes, 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 yes. Yeah. I, I, stopped, but I, yes, that's how I was doing it. <laughs> I knew I recognized the look. I'm like, I've seen this somewhere. That's funny. Yeah. And I got to give credit to um, Lisa Kanda, who's a Creative Coast member, but she's also like this marketing whiz, especially when it comes to like LinkedIn. I mean, really all channels, but um, she focuses on LinkedIn and a lot of what she does and how that's not, you could, you should really be leveraging that. But all that to say, I worked for her freelancing and I learned so much from her and she taught me all these tools that you can use in like for free to level up your your social media basically, and make it look super professional. So um, like headliners, one of them, Lumen5. Gosh, I feel like there's more that we've tried and I just can't think of them. But if you go to lisacanda.com, she's got some really, um, I'm going to plug her because she's the one who I got these ideas from. So can you talk about what, um, going back to the Creative Coast, can you talk about what some of the benefits of joining are and getting involved and then uh, what types of businesses or entrepreneurs should be, um, you know, learning more about the creative coast. Yeah. So um, I don't think a lot of people know because we moved into the space right before kind of COVID 
took its foothold. But um, we we don't have a co-working space. We abandoned the idea that we're going to run a co-working space. That's not something we want to be. But we are in novel co-working, which is a co-working space. And we have a, a big suite on the bottom floor. And we have right now we have seven socially distanced desks set up and you can come and work like up to eight times a month. Just get out of your house, connect with people, um, use our, you know, we've got a fridge, we've got a kitchenette, um, we've got a podcast room, we've got a boardroom. And those are all things you can utilize depending on your membership level. Um, but basically um, that's kind of where we're at in terms of like connectivity in our office space. Um, Which is and- also located right downtown. Yeah. So novel co-working is on Johnson square and it's in the, like the first skyscraper in Savannah. Um, if you're familiar with that building, but, um, yeah, it's in novel co-working in the, the swivel doors. I think everybody knows that building for the swivel doors. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's, um, the membership basically is you get different perks with it, depending on the level. Um, there's a club, there's a community, there's a corporate membership, and um, the lowest membership is $30 a month. And I, th- I, I'm, I always get them confused. I don't know why, because I haven't pulled them up in a while. But I'm pretty sure it's the community membership that is the $30. Um, and then you go up and level. The corporate is depending on how many people you want working in the space. And then the club is $75 a month. But basically, um, you also have access to healthcare plans through Candor USA which is um, like a, a marketplace for healthcare insurance. And that's something that we found is really beneficial to people because a lot of freelancers or new companies, they don't, are not able to offer healthcare. And so if, if you become a member, then you get access to those plans and can sign your team up basically. So um, that's a perk of being in the space. And then we have our podcast room, which I know you're familiar with. It's um. Um, basically, it's just a, a, a space and we've got some sound uh, proof, proofing up. We've got a green screen in the background. We've got a TV, a monitor so you can look and hook your computer up to it. Um, we've got a mic and we've got a headset and you can come in and record your podcast in a quiet space, essentially with you know good internet. But um, then we have the boardroom and you can rent that out for team meetings and such. Um, but all of that kind of, again, depends on your membership level. And if you go to our website, thecreativecoast.org at the top, I want to make sure I'm saying it right. You go to community and then you go to join under that. It'll have a review of everything. And I got the memberships backwards. I know I would community. The club membership is $30. That's the lowest. And the community is $75 a month. I don't know why I always mix those up, but, um, um, but any, anyways, all that to say we exist to serve the type of individuals we exist to serve and what we really aim to do along with our mission and vision is we want to, if you've got a business idea and you want to be innovative with it, meaning doing something in terms of tech, you're doing something digitally, um, you know, it's an online business and marketplace, e-commerce, those are all in the scope of, of what we do. And really we say any business can be a tech business, but we focus on the tech aspect of it. So a lot of times we might have somebody, an, an older company in the community that's doing something like, um, You know, if you're, if you're still selling t-shirts out of your brick and mortar, that's not the business that we exist to serve. Um, We're doing, again, it's all digital, all tech. Um, Thinking of, um, you know, like when COVID hit, everyone went online. So everyone kind of became a tech business um, in essence. But, and I think that's a lot of what COVID taught us, but we can see how much more we can grow with an online business, with um, tech, with apps, um, web apps, things like that. So, um, and ideally, what we want to see, our ideal community member is somebody who wants to grow their business, they want to hire people, and they want to pay people more than the average, the national average. Um, you know, like, you know, they're on board with that $15 minimum wage, um, because people have to eat. And, um, you know, I, I think the, the other bit is they have, they want to give back to the community too. Like those are like, those are the ideal founders we're looking to bring into the community. And we want people, you know, we welcome everyone, but those are, that's our vibe. That's, that's our, um, our essence is we really, we really want people who 
want to help further this mission too, to be a part of it. Um, not only are they growing a startup, but yeah, they want to see the startup community robust and they want to have a strong tech community in Savannah. Tech Sav, I got to plug them. They are the tech community, like uh, freelance tech workers or um, remote tech workers or just tech any, working in a tech company in Savannah. They have meetups regularly. We want to help grow that community. Um, so that is kind of our idea. And I have to be clear with that because for so long, the Creative Coast kind of served everybody that had the name entrepreneur. And that's not really, you know, our partners at the C at CEDA and City of Savannah, they want us to grow again, like those high wage tech jobs. And that's what we, that's our goal, our long-term goal. And that's who've really founded the Creative Coast um, were people that had that in mind. Like, you know, we had all these SCAD students that were graduating and they were leaving Savannah and because there weren't jobs here. And they were creative and they were innovative and they were like, yeah, I love Savannah and I want to stay, but there's not a job for me here. So I can't. And so we've really tried to step that up by promoting the, op the job opportunities in Savannah from these companies that are techie and creative and, um, you know, showcase that, if that makes sense. I kind of did. That was a ramble, but I hope that described as, as efficiently as possible, what we do and um, who we really work to serve. So, and if you're listening and you're not located in Savannah, um, we have a woman from T Toronto, Canada, who's attending the Idea Accelerator Bootcamp. So, yeah. if you want to still check out what we do, there's a lot of good uh, uh, lunchtime uh, lunchtime topics. Uh, they're about an hour long. There, you can find them on our YouTube channel, the Creative Coast YouTube channel, um, which I'll again link to below, uh, as well as I'm a co-producer on the Entrepreneurs Night podcast, and the Entre you can also find those on YouTube. And um, because we're now a virtual world, like Kate was saying, uh, this a lot of this is to serve the Savannah community, but a lot of what we do uh, is online. And so we're, a, you know, we're becoming a global economy. So, um, so yeah, well, I'm just glad to be a part of it. Um, one last question. Mm -hmm. This podcast is to help younger, uh, a goal of this podcast is to help younger people who are, creative professionals and want to get into creative career paths um, to kind of help them learn from our mistakes, which I've made so many mistakes along the way. Um, but, you know, that's how we learn. And is there any advice you'd give to people who are just starting out to kind of fast track them down a career? Like if they want to do something similar to what you do? Yeah. Um, Fuzu, there's two things. And this is another thing I failed to mention about what the Creative Coast does is we support a number of youth programs. Um, so like STEM and we work with elementary school students, we have great junior, which is we bring in an, a speaker to, um, in the Chatham County school system, um, to schools in the Chatham County school system and beyond to talk about entrepreneurship and what led them there, um, and to inspire youth. And then, um, you know, we do partner with like a lot of the universities, like we just partnered or Jen just got involved with SCAD startup, which is a week long event where they create a startup concept or they help a business in Savannah, innovate. But all that to say, I say those things only to kind of uh, stress that I feel like there's one thing that I didn't do. And if I could go back, I think I would change this. I would have taken as many free opportunities or low cost opportunities and gotten involved with them at a much younger age and probably learned a little bit more about myself and what I like and what I don't like. And I just tended to, I, I like, I listened to what everybody told me I should do. And those people weren't wrong. They had the best interest in, you know, my best interest in mind when they were telling me these things, like, but in my head and my heart, I was like, you know, this is, that's just not what I want to do. Um, and I would say like, take as much time when you have time, when you're in your teens, when you're young to explore and figure out what it is that you really enjoy doing. And even like starting your own business at a young age or, um, building things at a young age. And it could be anything you build, you know, build a business, build, um, a product, build a service, you know, uh, just try things and figure out what you really, really are passionate about. And then, you know, maybe college is for you. Maybe it's not. Maybe you need to defer a year to, you know, like take your time to figure it out before you just jump into something and do what everybody else tells you you need to do and should be doing. And before you look at everybody else's life and go, I want that. 
because that's not, I think, you know, I, I say I would go back and I change it. I think I wouldn't be where I am today if I had changed it. I probably wouldn't be mm-hmm. at the creative place. But all that to say, I do wish I had explored more and tried to understand myself a little bit more and, and what I love and enjoy at a younger age um, when I had time. Because you get older and I'm going to be honest, when you graduate from school and you get a job, you're going to be hard pressed for time. When you start have a family, you're not going to have time. Like it's going to be late. Like sometimes I'm up if I want to work on my side hustle, I stay up late and work on it. Like I don't, and then I lose out on sleep. So you have time now and time is the most precious thing that you, you have, you know? So, um, I think that would be my advice. Awesome. So we've talked a lot about the creative coast, but if you're, if you want, or if you would like to talk about your side hustle or any, any, anything you're working on, now's a chance to kind of plug any, any other, how people can maybe find you, connect with you if you want people to do that. Um, mm-hmm. Or, uh, you know, if you want to promote a business of yours, just what's going on. Yeah. So I'm always, I always have ideas. And one of the things that I've been thinking about doing for years is, um, and especially with all the negativity in the news and the headlines that are often used to attract people to like, it's usually like a negative headline, right? Like that's what gets views. That's what pulls people back in. Like psychologically, it sets off chemicals in your brain that make you want to keep watching this negative stuff, right? I think there's been studies on it. I couldn't tell you what they are, but data reflects that. So um I know that like I thrive on positivity and I have always enjoyed working with positive people and I have always wanted to start a business around this idea of positivity. And so one of my latest thing, I don't know why I'm announcing it because I don't have a website yet, but it's something that I've been working on and coming up with the concept for is Good News Georgia. So it's a company that focuses just on good news. And like, it's not necessarily like, it can be a business, but it could be like a neighbor, a story of a neighbor helping somebody out. And there's media companies out there doing this, but none are specific to state. And I have a strategy by keeping it focused on the state level and not like doing, oh, everywhere. So anywho, um, any, that's kind of what I've been working on lately. Um, And I have some other things like, um, I'm not ready to talk about them yet. I don't think. (laughs) Cause they're, they're fresher, but I, I've, you know, I've done the thing where I'm like, Oh, I'm going to come up with a social media site for like a social media page. But you know, like I'm really like, do, you know, I'm not really doing the work to test out the idea yet on those things. So I don't know if I should speak on them. I want to, but I just don't know that I should. <laughs> are you, are you open to people connecting with you on LinkedIn? Yeah, absolutely. And especially if you have, here's ways that we can help you some easy, quick ways. If you've got a story, if you're an innovative uh, um, individual and you're working on something and you want to get news out about it, um, send it to me. You can Caitlin at the creative coast.org. It's K A I T L I N at the creative coast.org. Um, or if you've got an event that it focuses on helping businesses, growing businesses, um, or it can even be like a marketing event. Cause we, you know, those are our heavily attended events because every business wants marketing advice. Um, you know, we'll, we'll promote those events for you. We'll promote your startup. We'll promote your endeavor um, with the press release, you know, we'll get the word out. So, um, and if you also want to speak at an event, like a lunchtime topic, and you have a topic that could help the startup community or the innovative community, um, you know, we have, for example, we, it could, it could probably be different from what you're thinking when I say startup community. Like we have somebody who's going to come talk about Clubhouse in a few weeks, um, Melissa Litchfield. And, you know, that's going to help startups. Like, you know, I, it doesn't have to be so specific to start up the startup world. We have, we do have someone who's going to talk about starting and growing your business. Um, I'm, I'm really been looking for someone to talk about big data. So if you have experience in big data and what the future of, of growing companies based on big data, I really want to talk to you. And I'd really love to have you come speak. Cause I think I've got a guy for you. You do. Awesome. Mm-hmm. I would love to have them on. Cause I'm curious about it. And I think a lot of people are like, what is, there's the question of like, what is big data and what does it really mean? And what should I be looking at in my data? So, um, you know, so the topics can vary and all that. Is, so if you've got a topic you want to share with the community, let me know and um, we'll get you set up with a date and um, the specifics. All right. Well, thank you for coming on. Thank you for having me. I feel honored to be here. I, I've watched your episodes and um, 
I feel like I'm in good, like the people that you've had featured, I'm like super impressed with. And um, I'm like honored to be a guest on. Creative oh yeah, no, you were, you were on my short list. So no worries. Um, in, in upcoming episodes of the creative truth, I'm going to be talking to other artists, entrepreneurs and creative professionals to help discover their path to success. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're listening on your favorite podcast platform, please leave us a good review. You can send suggestions for guests and episodes to wecreatetruth at gmail.com or visit us online at creative-truth.com to learn more. And we have our swag store now live and up and running. So thanks for listening and we'll see you in the next episode.